Tila mahahatula na nga ng pagkabilanggo si former President Rodrigo Duterte, ito nga ay matapos isambulat ni Senator Leila de Lima at ng ilang taong ginamit ni Duterte, ang lahat ng kanilang nalalaman sa mga kasalanang ginawa ni Rodrigo Duterte sa marami nating kababayan noong ito pa ang namumuno sa bansa. Narito panoorin kung ano nga ba talaga ang magiging hatol kay former President Rodrigo Duterte. We have a list of those who will interpolate uh, uh, Senator Laila de Lima. And the first to interpolate is uh, Congressman uh, Raul Manuel. You are recognized. You have five, ten minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning po sa fellow members ng Quadcom, sa mga resource persons po natin. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, nabanggit po ni uh, Senator Laila de Lima na ang leader mismo ng Davao Death Squad ay mismo yung uh, dating mayor din, Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Did I hear it right, Mr. Chair? Yes, those are the claims of those witnesses that we talked to. That is also the claim of Edgar Matobato and Arturo, Arturo Lascañas. At Mr. Chair, siya po yung merong uh, alias na Superman bilang leader ng Davao Death Squad. That is correct. Uh, Mr. Chair, given na meron ngang mga rewards dun sa mga napapatay na mga suspects or involved di umano sa drug trade, uh, Mr. Chair, ano ang source nitong binayad dun sa mga kasama yung mga informants, yung mga sibilyan na mga force multipliers, pati sa mga assassins? Nabanggit ko po yan sa statement ko kanina o sa presentation ko kanina na meron ng gagaling from the office of the mayor itself. The intel funds from the office of the mayor. The DTS logistics and finances came from the peace and order or intel fund of MRRD. That's according to the CHR witnesses and also, no, from the from Las Canas ICC affidavit. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, may we get once again yung breakdown? Ano-ano po yung mga uh, pwedeng pinagpuntahan nitong uh, intelligence funds? Halimbawa, as mentioned, mayroon pong pati mga Christmas gifts dun sa mga uh, police na aktibong nagpatupad ng uh, ganitong tipo ng uh, gera kontra droga? Yes. Yung uh, nasa isang slide kanina, yung according to the CHR witnesses, witness, kung ilan yung amount, kung magkano yung amount in for the 1988 to 2000 period. Kasi sinabi ko kanina na actually two periods yung DDS. 1998 to 2000, then 2001 to 2016. Nagkaroon ng break nung naging congressman yung dating mayor. Now, so 15,000, 5,000 to the handler, 10,000 to the assassins, and then yung sa 13,000 to 15,000, 3,000 to 5,000 for the handler, 7,000 to 8,000 for the assassins, and 500 to 1,000 for civilian informant uh, abanteros. They call it, they call them abanteros. Yung kay Mr. Lascanias naman, ang sinabi niya sa kanyang affidavit, DDS members were paid anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 for every victim. Yun yung sa mga ordinary victims. At yun, meron naman sinas, sinatawag na special project killings. Mas mataas. They were rewarded anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million pesos depending on the status of the target. Yun po ang mga natandaan ko nung binasa ko yung affidavit ni Mr. Lascanias at dun din po nung binasa ko at review ko yung aking personal investigation notes from the CHR investigation. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh Merong nabanggit din na merong weekly gas allowance. Bahagi po ba iyon ng bayad sa mga uh, police na nagpatupad ng uh, 
Davao level war on drugs. Merong weekly gas allowance, may yes. bukod pang cash allowance, tsaka yes. Christmas gifts. According to Mr. Lascanias, this includes weekly gas allowance, monthly cash allowance, and Christmas cash gifts. Uh, Mr. Chair, ano po ang pagtingin ng ating resource person, uh, Senator Laila Dilima? Kasi kung ang nabanggit ni uh, Colonel Garma ay pinatupad ang Davao model from ang scope lang ay sa Davao City at ginawa itong isang nationwide na drug campaign. At ang source ng uh, funding para dun sa rewards, Mr. Chair, ay ang intelligence fund sa Davao City. Posible po ba na ang ginamit din dun naman sa nationwide na war on drugs ay ang intelligence funds pero this time ay yung intelligence funds ng Office of the President? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, the possibility is always there but I have no knowledge about that. I don't know that. Uh, wala pa po akong nakita na mga dokumento na nasa akin na yun talaga ang source nung drug war na from 2016 up to uh, 2022. But it's quite possible kasi meron talagang reward system. We, we, um, we can only surmise at this point in the absence of direct evidence na meron talagang magsasabi kung saan talaga yun ang galing. Maybe sila Colonel Garma, sina Colonel Leonardo, baka, baka alam nila because they were part of that. Si, si Colonel Garma, yung uh, inutusan, according to her, na maghanap ng pwedeng mag-implement ng drug war based on the Davao model. And this is, yung sinabi ko kanina, this was the Davao model. May kasamang mga reward, may kasamang mga cash incentives, may bracketing din. Depende kung sino involved, kung sino papatayin. And so that's the reward, that's the incentives. So, posible rin na gumamit uli ng Intel Fund this time from the uh, office of the President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before I proceed sa uh, iba kong tanong, dahil uh, Mr. Chair, uh, kung Doon pa lang sa unang taon ng uh, pagpapatupad ng uh, war on drugs sa ilalim ni uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte, doon sa Committee on Human Rights, ano ko nating figure at mismo ay uh, yun pa yung sinight na accomplishment sa report ng uh, Presidential Communications Office ay umabot sa uh, nasa uh, ilang tens of thousands Kung ang ititake nating figure, Mr. Chair, ay 20,000, kasama doon yung mismo ay uh, confirmed na police yung pumatay. Tapos maging yung mga vigilante killings, Mr. Chair, na ang uh, pumatay ay pwedeng uh, hindi kilalang mga tao, pero bahagi yun ng uh, tinuturing na uh, tagumpay, di umano, ng war on drugs. Uh, Kinumpit kasi natin, Mr. Chair, kung uh, 20,000, Doon pa lang sa time frame na yon 20,000 na yung mga napatay. Tapos, kung yung uh, minimum na reward ay uh, 50,000, assuming pa lang na mga uh, small time or yung mga peddlers, yung mga pinatay, Mr. Chair, at least aabot ko, imumultiply natin, Mr. Chair, 20,000 times 50,000. Kakailanganin ang nasa 1 billion pesos pa lang dun sa mga reward sa pagpatay, Mr. Chair. Hindi pa kasama dito yung mga allowances, yung mga uh, kung merong mga weekly uh, gas allowance pa rin, weekly cash allowance, at iba pa. Sa rewards pa lang, Mr. Chair, sa ganong time frame, 1 billion pesos na ang kailangan. Pero, Mr. Chair, kung ikukumpara kasi natin sa intelligence funds pa lang ng PNP, and let's take yung first year ng uh, Duterte administration, ang intelligence funds ng PNP noong 2017 ay nasa 468 million pesos lamang, Mr. Chair. Walang kalahating bilyong piso ang intelligence funds ng PNP. So kung ganun, Mr. Chair, saan pwede talagang kumuha nung ganun kalaking pera bilang pangbayad 
bilang premyo doon sa mga police na nakapatay. Kaya, Mr. Chair, kung magpa-process of elimination tayo, dahil uh, PNP lang naman eh, yung pwedeng ahensya, sana, na pagkuna ng ganun. Pero then again, kahit yung intelligence funds ng PNP, hindi sapat. So, wala ng ibang agency, Mr. Chair, na merong mas malaki pang intelligence funds na pwedeng pagkunan, walang iba, kundi yung mismong Office of the President. Lalo na kung itutugma din natin yan dun sa uh, mga testimonya na merong mga taga-presidential management staff na bahagi rin nung channel, nung uh, reward system na ito mula sa presidente patungo sa mga uh, kasunod na mga level ng mga police officers maging si uh, Senator Bongo, si uh, PNP Chief Bato de la Rosa, at iba pang mga dating opisyal under the Duterte administration. Kaya with that, Mr. Chair, uh, tingin natin meron ding sapat na batayan para atin na rin silipin paano ginamit ng Duterte administration ang kanyang uh, intelligence funds. Uh, darating din sa punto, Mr. Chair, na dapat ay uh, mag-issue na rin tayo ng uh, sa pinadusistekum sa mga dokumento na sinabmit ng Office of the President to COA, to the Commission on Audit, para talaga mabusisi natin kung ano yung naging justifications for the use of intelligence funds by the Office of the President under Rodrigo Duterte. So, kasunod, Mr. Chair, uh, kasunod na tanong kay uh, Senator uh, Laila de Lima. Nabanggit po kasi ang tungkol sa quarry mass grave. At kung isipin ko pa lang, kahindik-hindik ito, Mr. Chair. Kaya pasintabi na lang po sa ating mga uh, kababayan na baka sa ganitong oras ay uh, kumakain habang nanonood sa Quadcom hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, meron po bang binigay na description yung kung sino mang witness patukol sa paano ba uh, na-facilitate ang ganitong mga mass grave. Paano siya, paano gumagana yung, uh, paano hinandle ang ganitong mga mass grave? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, kasama po kasi sa organizational structure ng DDS. Ay yung pinakita po kanina. Now there is this SPO4 Bienvenido Laod as team handler and in charge of the Laod Quarry Mass Grave. Nandiyan din po yung si SPO3 Jim Tan as team handler and in charge of the Mandug Mass Grave. Doon pa lang ho, no, nag kami sa 2009, may mga napag, na, na, nakapagsabi na po sa amin na meron ganyan na mga mass graves kung saan tinatapon yung mga naging biktima ng DDS. Now, sinubukan ho namin na puntahan yung sa Laud Quarry Kaya lang, nung pagdating po namin doon, mukhang hindi ho namin naabot yung exact location kasi the Laud property is a hilly part, medyo ano po yun, parang hill. And then, uh, akala namin hanggang doon lang at a certain point, nakakita kami ng ilan-ilan, konti lang, na human remains, skull. Pero we learned later na hindi naman pala doon yung mga talagang mass grave of that property. It was in a higher portion of the Laud property. Na nandun nga daw po yung karamihan ng mga tinatapon nila na mga pinatay. So there are actually several mass graves from various sources. Yung Laud and then yung Mandug mass grave and then meron din ho sa Samal Island. Yun po ang mga informasyon na nakuha namin. So we actually applied for search warrant. But then nagkwinash ho ng isang RTC of Manila. Manila or Quezon City, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, later, na reverse yung uh, quashal of the search warrant ng Court of Appeals. And then eventually, the Supreme Court in 2014 um, affirmed the validity of the search warrant or affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeals. Kaya lang, wala na hong naging follow-up implementation of the warrant of arrest by, either by CHR or by PNP because I think, in, by, because by 2014, in so far as CHR is concerned, its investigation closed already when, it's, when it uh, submitted or issued its uh, resolution of June 
2012. So, hindi na po na-follow up yung pag- uh, uh, ano sana ng mga mass graves na yan. Uh, Mr. Chair, may nabanggit na tatlong uh, location ng mga mass grave. Uh, Doon sa course ng investigation ni uh, Senator Laila bilang uh, dating uh, chairperson ng Commission on Human Rights, uh, meron po bang uh, credible estimate kung ilan itong mga mass grave na ito na siyang uh, finacilitate ng uh, Davao Death Squad bilang bahagi ng uh, War on Drugs? It was difficult to really determine with, with you know, to, to come up with a credible figure. Ang natatandaan ko po, yung si um, Edgar Matobato, meron din po siyang sinabi tungkol dyan. I'm not sure if he actually mentioned any number with respect dun sa mga alam niya na mga linibing nila. In fact, in, in some of those, participant talaga siya sa paglilibing kasama yung mga iba pang miyembro ng DDS. So I can, I, I have to uh, uh, check from Mr. Matubato's affidavit the one, and also his testimony before the Senate kung meron siya talagang nabanggit na estimate of the number. But again, I think it would be difficult really uh, na makita, makuha natin kung ilan talaga yung mga uh, linibing doon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pero Mr. Chair, uh, at least, uh, so far alam natin, merong at least tatlo na mga mass grave. Tama po ba? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kasi Mr. Chair, isipin pa lang natin kahit nga isang mass grave pa lang ay uh, sobrang uh, heinous na eh ng kung sino man yung mga gagawa ng isang ganong bagay. Tapos doon lang basta-basta magtatambak ng mga bangkay ng mga ng mga tao na merong mga pamilya, di ba? merong mga uh, pinanggagalingan din, merong mga gusto sanang gawin sa buhay pero uh, napatay na lang ng gano'n na lamang. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, meron po ba kahit isa lang dun sa mga bangkay mula sa mga mass grave na na-retrieve pa para maibalik sa kanilang mga pamilya? Wala po ako matandaan. At Mr. Chair, meron din bang mga pamilya na lumapit sa CHR dahil ang suspecha po nila ay uh, dahil hindi na nila mahanap yung kanila mga pamilya, sila po ay uh, nag-isip na na baka nasa mass grave na yung uh, bangkay ng kanilang mga kamag-anak. May ganun po bang mga instances? Wala po akong ma-recall ma if there are really families ng mga victims sa, sa DDS killings na lumapit sa CHR para hanapin yung kanilang mga bangkay. Ang uh, alam ko, because it's more recent, is that may mga families of victims who um, visited me when I was uh, in jail at Camp Karame at the PNP Custodial Center, and there were quite a number of them who relayed to me yung mga naging experience nila, yung tungkol sa pagpatay under the war on drugs. But as to the mass graves, Again, I, I will have to review my personal notes. Ma, 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 comprehensive po yung aking personal notes, and I'll have to check that out. Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, noong ginawa ng nationwide model, yung model ng war on drugs galing sa Davao, uh, na pinamunuan nung then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Mr. Chair, dahil... Uh, I would assume na hindi na ganun kadaling uh, mag-set up ng mga mass graves, lalo na kung ginawa halimbawa yung uh, oplantokhang sa mga urban centers. So, uh, in that case, I, uh, based dun sa initial investigations nung si uh, Senator Lela de Lima ay uh, nag-lead na po ng uh, isang komite sa Senado, Ano na po yung kadalasang paraan para ma-dispose yung uh, bangkay ng mga naging biktima, no? kahit ng mga innocenting biktima ng war on drugs? Siyempre yung mga sa salvaging. But, pero alam niyo po about the Senate inquiry. I was the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights, but I was able to um, preside or conduct only an inquiry for three hearings. Kasi po after the third hearing, 
kung saan pinisenta ko po si Edgar Matobato, ay uh, inalis na po ako bilang chairperson of that committee by the majority of my colleagues then. So iba na po yung nagpapat nagpatuloy. Because in that Senate inquiry, gusto ko sana talagang tukuyin na yung mga killings na yan, starting in 2016, are really state-sponsored or state-inspired. Kaya lang, as, as, as I would remember, may nakaredi actually na about 13 CHR witnesses, witnesses from the CHR na pinovide sa Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights. Pero dalawa pa lang po yung naipresent ko, and also si Mr. Edgar Matobato, but I was already ousted as a CHR chairperson. Now, after the third hearing, what I recall is that three more hearings were done under a new chairperson. Pero, it was abruptly terminated because they did not even call the other available CHR witnesses na ready sanang present before I, I was ousted as CHR chairperson. They did not even present them. So, ang nangyari, they issued the, the uh, findings, the resolution, and one of the core finding is that there's no evidence that the killings at that time were actually state-ponsored. Something that I wanted to prove, sana, kung hinayaan lang po ako. Although, of course, I could understand that perhaps it was such a tough job, a tough challenge for me to prove it, especially that nandyan pa yung dating Pangulo sa poder, na nahihirapan pa na talagang kumuha ng mga iba pa ng mga witnesses, especially from within. Hindi katulad po ngayon na naglalabasan na po sila. May mga insiders na po na sinasabi na kung ano yung mga nalalaman nila, but not during the time. Pero I wanted to do it. Um, after sana the presentation of those CHR witnesses, these are individual accounts of individual cases of summary execution during operations, yung mga sinasabi nilang ng laban, pero hindi naman pala ng laban. I was also looking at the uh, medical certificates, the various medical certificates that we got. Marami po yun. At ang dami talaga mga kaduda-duda doon. And of course, we summoned then PNP Chief Batol de la Rosa and other officials of the PNP, but they were all denying that these are the workings of uh, PNP forces or that these are uh, cases of EJKs and let alone state-sponsored killings. So yun po. So uh, nothing, nothing came out. It was Kaidi, almost a whitewash. Can yes. wrap up, please? Yes. Huling uh, topic, Mr. Chair, since na present din ang uh, relation ng ating uh, local uh, law dun sa... ICC or yung International Criminal Court, uh, since some camps would say na hindi dapat tayo uh, maging uh, open sa quote-unquote intervention, no? ganun yung tinatawag sa mga hakbang na ginagawa ng International Criminal Court since dapat daw ay uh, ipatupad natin yung ating sariling batas. Huwag daw tayong uh, pumayag na panghimasukan tayo. No? Ganun yung pagtingin sa ginagawa ng ICC. But since uh, Senator Laila mentioned yung Section 17 ng RA 9851, uh, tama po ba yung aking interpretation, Mr. Chair, na pinapatupad pa rin naman natin yung ating local law, which is yung RA 9851, if the Philippine government cooperates with the International Criminal Court dahil sa... Committee nga po natin, Mr. Chair, sa Committee on Human Rights and Committee on Justice, we approved a resolution. We are urging, as part of the legislative, we are urging the executive na mag cooperate sa ICC when it comes to uh, this uh, war on drugs. So, ibig sabihin, Mr. Chair, we are not surrendering our sovereignty. We are actually implementing the intent of our uh, domestic laws kapag mag operate ang Philippine government sa ICC. Uh, tama po ba yung aking pagtingin, Mr. Chair? Tama po yan, Mr. Chair and Your Honors. Dahil nga nandyan ang batas. In fact, nauna pa yan, 2009, before the Senate ratified the Rome Statute.
But Jung Rom Statute po was signed as early as 2000. I was, re I was just reminded by Attorney Conte earlier that it was actually signed by uh, the former president, Erap Estrada. Kaya lang, the ratification took some time. So it was only in 2011. But before that, pinasanga itong RA 9851. And sa pagbabasa ko nga po ng mga provisions on 9851, it is as if those who push for that are actually anticipating that there would be an international body that would be uh, coming in or would be uh, uh, involved in, in, the, in, in the investigation of crimes that would fall under any of those crimes cognizable by ICC, including crimes against humanity. Kaya nila siguro pinasok yung section 17 na yan. Malinaw sa akin na kahit may investigation tayo dito, pwede pa tayo makipag-cooperate. And there's nothing in the Rome Statute which says except the complementary principle, complementarity principle, na ang hinihintay kasi ng ICC ay yung genuine investigation focusing on those with the highest or the greatest responsibility. If I may just quote from the uh, ICC pre-trial chamber's uh, decision, in January 26, 2000, in 2023, decision authorizing the resumption of the investigation. Ang naging conclusion nila, kaya they ordered for the resumption of the proceedings of the ICC investigation at uh, dinismiss nila yung appeal ng Philippine government. And I quote, The domestic proceedings in the Philippines do not sufficiently mirror the expected scope of the court's investigation since they only address the physical low-ranking perpetrators and at present do not extend to any high-ranking officials. Further, the ICC pretrial chamber said, the chamber finds that the PH has failed to demonstrate that, it, that the Philippines has failed to demonstrate that it has conducted relevant investigations and prosecution with respect to four issues. This was in 2023, as I said, ito yung decision nila, authorizing the resumption. Number one, the alleged killings in Davao from 2011 to 2016, which is within the duration of the ICC investigation. Pwede lang kasi mag-investiga yung ICC from yung sa 2011 up to 2019 when the withdrawal became effective. Number two, crimes other than murder committed in connection with the war on drugs. Three, the killings outside official police operations, meaning yung mga riding in tandem, yung mga, hindi natin sigurado kung mga police ba yan, or are these agents of uh, police officers, yung mga uh, assassins. And number four, and this is very important, the responsibility of individuals beyond the physical perpetrators of the alleged crimes. So ang hinihintay nila, yung mga tunay na investigasyon targeting or involving yung mga nasa taas, beginning with the former president, who is clearly the mastermind as he induced the killings. And that is becoming clearer and clearer as uh, nakikita natin dito sa na mga lumalabas sa Quadcom hearing, then that is the complementarity principle. Since hindi pa nila nakikita may, that may tunay na investigation, and when they say investigation or proceedings, they are clearly referring to criminal proceedings. So ito pong magiging resulta ng Quadcom, fine, I think we can be hopeful and optimistic na may mga lalabas. Pero later po, o may lalabas na resolusyon na can also categorically identify yung mga nasa taas based on the evidence na makakalap o kinakalap na ngayon ng Quad Committee. But later, kung hanggang doon lang po at hanggang doon lang yung mga gagawin din ng Kongreso because ang mandato ng Kongreso is, you know, in aid of legislation to enact laws, it could only recommend 
to the other relevant agencies and offices kung ano pang mga dapat gawin, including the investigation. Kung wala talaga yung investigation na yan, hindi po natin pwedeng pigilan ang ICC. Because yun na yung sinabi nila. Kasi hindi pa naman talaga tina-target, puro lang sa low level. Tsaka yung ICC is not actually focusing on the low level. It's not possible for them to look into each and every case of killings under war on drug. Kaya dun sila nakatuon sa mga those with the greatest responsibility. So, okay, so to wrap up, Mr. Chair. Uh, wait, wait, this is your last question, Congressman yes. Manuel. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, so... Uh, Just sa closing manifestation, Mr. Chair, na batay dun sa mga narinig natin, edi uh, habang yung mga nasa tuktok kasi dati na ngayon ay uh, dapat sana sumagot sa mga tanong natin, ay naghahanap ng uh, pati bang paraan para makaiwas o uh, parang nakipagpatintero uh, tayo sa kanila, Mr. Chair. Kaya sa totoo lang, dapat ay Uh, ma-exhaust natin yung iba't ibang mga paraan para talaga may sulong yung hustisya para dun sa mga naging biktima ng extrajudicial killings. At bahagi niyan, Mr. Chair, habang meron tayong mga ganitong investigasyon, actually, uh, yung pagsulong din ng investigasyon ng ICC, it complements our efforts dito sa bansa natin. And uh, also, Mr. Chair, yung uh, fact din na dahil nga mula sa Davao ay uh, inapply on a nationwide scale kung ano yung kanilang uh, approach dun sa Davao at uh, intelligence funds yung ginamit nila doon. We also observe a pattern, Mr. Chair, na from just 250 million pesos na level ng intelligence funds for the Office of the President, lumobo pa ito to 1.25 billion pesos. Kaya, Mr. Chair, malaki yung posibilidad talaga na ito din ay uh, isa sa pinagmulan ng uh, pera para mapagana yung peke at madugong war on drugs. Kaya dapat din ay mabusisi natin paano yan ginamit ng uh, Duterte administration. Yun okay, lang, Mr. Thank, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Manuel. Mr. Chair, can I just add very, very short? Okay, please, lang, uh, uh, Senator, make it short. Siya, yeah. uh, Honorable uh, Manuel, isa pa ho sa sinabi ng... Um, ICC pretrial chamber in concluding that it does not sufficiently mirror their investigation. Ito mga proceedings, whatever proceedings are, are were being conducted as of 2023. Ang sabi po, any ongoing domestic investigation, at least that's as of 2023, has failed to inquire into any pattern of criminality or the systematic nature of crimes. So gusto po yan i-establish ng ICC dahil hindi pa nila nakita yan sa mga investigasyon dito. The pattern of criminality or the systematic nature of crimes o yung state policy angle. Yun po ang dapat tingnan din. Okay, thank, thank you. you po. Thank you, Senator Dilima. Before we uh, proceed with the next interpolator, let me remind the honorable members of the committee that We have, sev we have invited several resource persons for today's committee hearing. And uh, as much as we would like to ask questions or interpolate uh, our resource person, Sen former Senator Laila de Lima, there are other equally important resource persons that we have invited with regard to the issue of EJK. So if I may uh, request the honorable members to shorten our questions. We will have several opportunities Because this is not the first and the last that we will invite Senator Leila de Lima. There will be several opportunities for all of us to be able to ask uh, questions on the issue. Now, the next interpolator uh, is uh, Congressman Rog Gutierrez. You have 10 minutes, and please uh, shorten uh, our uh, interpolations. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll just be directing my questions to the former Senator de Lima, and I'll try to make it quick, Mr. Chair. Um, to the chair most respectfully just to give us a background po, no? Kasi, no, I'm sure we'll have more opportunities in a later time but just to lay the base for the interpolation that we're having for the inquiry that we're having um, could you please give us a background through the honorable chairman of uh, your service because uh, as I understand you were previously uh, chairwoman for the CHR is that correct and after that you were the secretary for the DOJ from 2010 to 2015 yes mr chair your honors and then senator from 2016 to 2022 yes sir prior to your stint as uh, 
in the CHR, um, may we know of your track service po in relation uh, anything that would be relevant to the investigation on the EJK? My first government service was a CHR chairperson. Before that, I was a practitioner, an election law practitioner. Actually, I didn't have any background in human rights before I, I was appointed by the former president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, a CHR chairperson. So I was an election law practitioner, so that was my area of expertise. Very limited lang po yung exposure ko ng human rights before I joined the Commission on Human Rights. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Given that uh, background, I guess the, for the purposes of our inquiry on EJK, it would be appropriate to limit the interpolation for the years 2018 up to the, um, her, uh, well, up to now, since she still is uh, espousing this as her advocacy. So, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe ask, just to clarify, for during your stint in the CHR in 2018, 2008 to 2010, this was when you started the investigation into the Davao Death Squad. Yes, Your Honor, 2009. Uh, 2009. And uh, what is the result of this? Uh, how do you call this? Is this an inquiry? Is this a... Yes, it was actually a public inquiry. We held several public hearings right there in Davao City. In fact, one of the resource persons that we summoned, and the very first resource person that we summoned was then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. We also summoned some other officers, especially in the police force and barangay captains, etc. Now, I was saying earlier that yung mga nakausap kasi namin ng mga insiders, kasi at that time, hindi pa namin nakausap sila Matobato and si Las Canias. Their names were already mentioned, but we never met them before. Nung sa Senate inquiry na lang sila lumabas. So, uh, yung sabi ko po kanina, nahirapan nga kami nung una because we have to really uh, hold uh, very discreet and mga nagtatago kami nun whenever we were, we were interviewing these witnesses. And we have to use aliases. Of course, they gave, gave, gave us the names, the true names, but they said they should not be revealed. They're, they're, they're uh, true names. So, Natapos namin yung hearings, but when, but hindi ko na po natapos yung pinaka report because I was already appointed as, 20, as uh, DOJ secretary. Although, as I said, I do have with me the uh, personal investigation notes, which I actually shared with the CHR, yung pagkakatanda ko po noon. And, and uh, the CHR later came up with this resolution in June 2012. Meron din po sila mga findings doon, but uh, yung iba po, marami po doon sa mga personal investigation notes na hindi na po nila nasama doon sa CHR resolution. I have no personal knowledge about the deliberations of the CHR and bank nung wala na po ako. Uh, kasi, um, now which resulted in their Senate, in, in their uh, resolution issued in June of 2012. Ang alam ko po, ang natatandaan ko po sa resolution na yon of 2012 is one of their recommendations is to investigate and file administrative and criminal charges against then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte and police officers who were, who were identified to be members of the uh, Davao Death Squad. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, so from 2008 to 2010, your stint as a chairperson... 2008. Of, uh, 2008, sorry. 2008 to 2010. Um, you started the investigations. You've had three, a few public hearings. You were not around for the resolution. But the resolution in June 2012, there was one of uh, the recommendations was to start an investigation. This was at the time that you were already Secretary of Justice. Is yes, Your Honor. Did you um, start any investigation in relation to the filing of this resolution? Uh, the resolution was directed also to the Ombudsman and also to investigative agencies to conduct further investigation, I gave uh, instructions to our NBI, NBI to follow through with the findings. Although my information then was that nahihirapan din sila. They could not even trace those witnesses anymore. So, si uh, Matobato nga po, even if he was covered under the witness protection program, eventually he left dahil hindi pa naman natapos yung investigation. Now, yung supposedly follow-through investigation then. Nang NBI. 
Thank you. Mr. Chair, and uh, just for the record, since 2012 and the stint was over by 2015, in a span of three years, I understand it would be hard to really ready a case and it would have spilled over. However, um, Mr. Chair, just a quick question. Your personal notes but that you mentioned and that you submitted to the ICC, is this an official document? It's a personal investigation notes because the, the, uh, it contained the, the facts, the uh, information that we got from several witnesses. Uh, as I recall, I shinier ko huyon dun sa CHR team uh, as part of the records of, of the um, investigation of the DDS. But uh, this cannot be considered official because uh, this was not really formally adopted, as far as I know, by the CHR and bank. Nung umalis na po ako. Um, so it was not, uh, Mr. Chair, it was not adopted by the CHR since it's personal in nature. However, it has been accepted by the ICC. Is that correct? Yes, I shared it. Um, as I recall, na, na, um, although I cannot really uh, say categorically kung talagang naipa, naipa share ko yun because I was one of those who, uh, who um, submitted actually a communication with the ICC. The supplemental communication. I must have mentioned that there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Thank Chair, you. for the last question, on, uh, for the last uh, topic on the background, the professional uh, government background. This is your Senate stint from 2016 to 2022, in which you held uh, three public hearings on the EJK. Maybe you know what was the status at the end of that? Did, I understand under our rules we can take uh, notice of proceedings in the Senate, but for the benefit of everyone here, and especially those who might not have had uh, have, have not been part of the government at the time. Um, may we know what was the result of that inquiry, or was it just abruptly stopped? The Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights, chaired by another senator, because I was no longer the chair, uh, issued a resolution, I think, if I'm not mistaken, December of 2016. I also submitted a dissenting report, a 144-page dissenting report. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the um, Senate resolution made a conclusion that there's no evidence that the killings then were state-sponsored. And, uh, and, and, and may, mga ibang mga re may mga recommendations there, but not about you know, filing of cases against Mr. Duterte, because nga, yung hindi naman tinapos, eh, um, there was an abrupt termination of those proceedings, as I mentioned. Hindi nga present lahat yung mga available CHR witnesses. So it was never pursued and uh, it's no longer surprising na ganun yung naging conclusion nila na hindi daw po state-sponsored. Although they made several good recommendations about, you know, reforms in the PNP system, etc., etc. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, moving forward. Um, of course, chronologically, this is no longer part of your government service, but we can't escape the fact that the cases were filed against you, Paul. Maybe we just know what is the status of these cases right now. Because, of course, this would come into the... Um, some people might ask, some people might question the credibility of you and your presence here as a resource person. So we'd just like to know, Paul, uh, how many cases were filed and what is the status of each of these? There were three drug-related cases filed against me. Initially, as... Uh, uh, consummated illegal drug trading. Illegal drug trading, consummated. But later, it was amended by the prosecution into conspiracy to commit illegal drug trading. I think they realized that they could not really make out a good case for consummated illegal drug trading kasi wala nga sila yung mga real evidence, wala yung corpus delicti, walang evidence of what exactly the kind of drugs that I allegedly traded, uh, money trail, paper trail, wala lahat yun. So they amended those cases into conspiracy to commit illegal drug trading in the hope that uh, sufficient na yung mga magiging testimonial evidence nung mga witnesses, mostly beloved drug lords or beloved inmates. And all three cases now have been dismissed. I've been acquitted. These are definitely trumped up charges.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the three cases were already dismissed. Uh, have any of them been dismissed by virtue of a demur to evidence, or it was all sought? Uh, yes, the two pursued? of them. Uh, among the three, uh, the first one was um, the grant of the demur to evidence. The second one was acquittal. And the third one was grant of demur to evidence. Now, the, th the, uh, the acquittal, the second case, ang alam ko po, ay uh, in appeal pa ng Office of the Solicitor General to the uh, Court of Appeals, which is clearly violative of the principle against double, of a double jeopardy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just a uh, note, po, no, given the credibility of our witness, and uh, it's very important to note that the first and third were dismissed by virtue of a uh, file demure to evidence, which means that the prosecution did not have evidence at the, to the point that the defense no longer needed to present their own. So, um, Mr. Chair, moving forward, just a quick question now. Now that we're going to the meet, and I think uh, we understand the former senator attended one of our hearings prior under the Committee on Ethics, uh, sorry, Human Rights. However, at the time, wala pa po yung revelation ni Colonel Garma. So I think it really changes everything now that we have the revelations of Colonel Garma and the, the corporate evidence that uh, somehow the so-called Davao template was um, sought to be replicated in nationwide scale. We'd just like to ask, given your, you, we, we're lucky you have the, our research person here comes today uh, wearing multiple hats. She was the commissioner of the CHR, which the task actually is to be a counter check to our authorities. At the same time, she served as part, uh, part of the structure of the authorities when she was secretary of the uh, justice. And finally, uh, while she was part of the legislative and the Senate, she actually filed an inquiry on EJK. So given your extensive knowledge of this and that you've had the background from the local up to the point and even chronologically up to the point in time in which supposedly the trans, um, there was already that progression from local to national. Could you please uh, educate us? Because one thing that I think that uh, we have to be concerned with is the so-called labeling of the war on drugs versus the EJK, extrajudicial killing. Because uh, as we understand based on the uh, testimony of Colonel Garma, the war on drugs po is under the auspices of authority. It is being conducted under the organization of the Philippine National Police, supposedly. Whether these elements of the PNP were working within or outside of the authority of the PNP, that is, does not escape the fact that it's more aligned to the state-sponsored element. However, when we talk about the EJK, and specifically in your inquiry on the DDS, we're talking more of the vigilante killings. And I believe last time there was a presentation, I believe it was Attorney Conti, uh, may we ask you very quickly uh, to Attorney Conti, Mr. Chair, um, I understand in your presentation last time there was a distinct point in time in which the war on drugs transitioned from vigilante killings onto state-sponsored uh, police operations. Can you please elucidate on that once again? Yes, uh, according to the data, the information from media reports, um, in the first three to six months of the war on drugs, it started with vigilante killings and then eventually it transitioned to Polit, uh, police um, perpetrated killings. So dito na po nagsimula bandang 2017 yung talagang police operations whether by bus, um, arrest warrants or search warrants. Thank you, uh, Attorney Conti. Mr. Chair, so uh, back to the former Senator De Lima. In your investigation of the so-called DTS, were you also investigating the police sponsor or the, the state side um, aspect of the war on drugs or was this purely on the vigilante? It also included the um, police side, the, uh, um, the PNP, the, the official, uh, because of the HCIS, the Heinous Crimes Investigated, Investigation Section, that was part of the official organizational structure of the DCPO, then the, the Davao City Police Office. So you mga naging member, especially the original members of that Heinous uh, Crimes Investigation Section were actually the DDS members, as uh, testified on or attested to, by, uh, especially by uh, Arturo Lascanias. So it's not just the killings by the ride, riding in tandem, the unknown assassins, but precisely the structure which um, points to the fact that these are headed, especially the handlers, by uh, police men uh, under the DCPO. Yan po ang pagkakatanda ko dun sa mga nakuha naming uh, impormasyon. So, already covered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, 
the former senator has now confirmed, aside from the vigilante killings, the riding tandem, and the Sinaloa-style killings, according to Attorney Conti, there were also police operations involved. Can you confirm for us, uh, Mr. Ch uh, through the chairman, of course, the operational aspect of the police? This would include yung mga nanlaban in legitimate police operations and by bus operations. Was this something that was investigated in the uh, locality of Davao during your time as CHR? Yeah, some, some aspect of it. Because now of the organizational structure, because indeed policemen were handling the operations. You mga sinabi ko pong, <coughs> excuse me, you mga sinabi ko pong pangalan, SPO4 Sanson Beneventura as the logistics finance and death clearance officer, SPO3 Arturo Lascanias as overall team leader for operations and planning. Sila SPO4 Bienvenido Laud as team handler, SPO3 Jim Tan as team handler. They were then, as far as I know, as far as I could recall from the records, they were then active police officers, but assigned to this HCIS, or Hinos Crimes Investigation Section, in charge of those uh, killings. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for the clarification. However, I, I think uh, most respectfully, we have to clarify po, the, the there being members of the PNP should be distinguished from the operations being undertaken by the PNP. Because while we have uh, confirmed, you know, uh, based on your testimony, that they are confirmed to be active pol uh, members of the uniformed personnel, but if the way that the EJK was conducted was solely limited to the vigilante side, we're talking about Sinaloa killings, abduction, riding in tandem, extrajudicial. This would be different from the state, uh, the police operation side. Because what we've seen based on the operations, they come in two forms. You have usually, when we're talking about the HVT, the high value target, this would rely on uh, vigilante killings that we would see and have seen based on testimony also of uh, Colonel Garma. But we also have to consider that for the supposedly legitimate operations in which later on there is supposedly um, allegedly planting of evidence, nan laban, drug uh, buster by bus which has gone wrong. I think this would be considered as could under the auspices of a legitimate police operation. Now my question uh, to the former senator, to the honorable chairman, is that was this part of the so-called DDS operations in the locality? Because what I'm talking about here, what we're basing on, the testimony of Colonel Garma is talking about the nationwide scale and we've seen it the testimony of Attorney Conti. We're talking nationwide, we've seen both vigilante and police operations. My question now is, at least for the investigation of the DDS in Davao, did this involve, because I understand there's the HCIS and that they were active members of the police force, but did they employ by bust operations and nanlaban to perpetrate this uh, so-called war on drugs? To answer your question, Your Honor, I have to point out that the nanlaban concept actually originated in Davao and invented by the DDS. So it's not something new. There may be fewer cases then, kasi karamihan nga is the riding in tandem, mga vigilante killings, as, as induced by then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. But there were also specific cases na ganon, because the, the, ver, the nanlaban concept actually originated from the DDS uh, operations. Thank you for that confirmation. So although it might have been a few, it's not novel. There was an Anlaban and there was supposedly legitimate police operations conducted in the locality. Yes, yes Your Honor. Um, Mr. Chair, one more question on that. Um, given that the transition from the local to the national, from the local it was talking about barangay to LGU level, uh, city. Of course, it would take a lot of um, expanding for it to go into national level. And we've had through the PNP, yung, now what we're talking about uh, oper yung double barrel, Oplan double barrel. You have the Tokhang and then the high value targets. Was this something that you also saw being conducted in Davao at the time that you were conducting your investigation to the DDS? Or was this purely mostly skewed towards the vigilante side? Okay, um, the Oplan Tokhang and then later the Oplan uh, double barrel, they, they, you know, they, be, they became more pronounced and as they became official operations because of that PNP circular. No, I'm not. I don't remember any evidence or any document or any information that there is such an official operations plan that could be similar to the uh, Oplan Tokhang or Oplan Double uh, Barrel. But, as I said earlier, meron din mga nanlaban operations. So, uh, these are 
actually uh, implemented by certain police officers in Davao. So I would not know how they call them, but I'm sure there are really such plans. Kasi nga, there's organizational structure, again, based on, uh, Mr. Art uh, on Arturo Lascania's information, is it's then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte who was the very head of the uh, Davao death squad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the last point, um, given that there might be some differences, it might, have been, might not have been formalized, but we see a pattern. But yes. most distinctly is that you have confirmed just earlier that there was a rewards and payment scheme. And I think this is what's very important for us here in this inquiry today, given that this has basically been confirmed by Colonel Garma. Unfortunately, Mr. Chair, I still have more questions regarding the policy operation and organizational parallelisms between the investigation perhaps that they had on the DDS and the inquiry that we have now on the EJK. But given that uh, we have more research persons and more uh, colleagues who would like to interpolate, I will now yield for that time. Thank you very much, former Senator. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you.